Hey guys, KingBall06 here, and we're right back with another video. In this one, I am doing one of the Dragon Ball Super Tournament Empowered Transitions in the Dragon Ball Super Broly art style, but with Naruto characters. In this video, I'll discuss the idea behind this specific artwork, my admiration for the Dragon Ball Super Broly art style, and my thoughts on Dragon Ball Super Broly as a whole. So after I finished this Tsunade artwork from last week's video, I was thinking about Naruto characters as a whole. I was also inspired by the recent art videos from Totally Not Mark, in which Mark, as along with other artists, drew shots from Dragon Ball Super, Super Hero, and Dragon Ball Super, Z, etc. in different Dragon Ball styles. So, my favorite style from all of Dragon Ball, uh, keep in mind I did not watch the original Dragon Ball, but I read the manga. Uh, I've seen Dragon Ball Z, I've seen Dragon Ball GT, I've seen Dragon Ball Super. And I've seen um, all the Dragon Ball Z movies. And then I haven't seen the newest one, Dragon Ball Super Superhero. And I've seen Dragon Ball Super Broly, but out of all of them, my favorite is Dragon Ball Super Broly. So I decided to mix things up and do Naruto characters. So I made a few lists of groups of 10 Naruto characters I could do this for. And for this video, I did the 10 best participants in the preliminary round of the tuning exams. That being Naruto, Neji, Dosu, Shikamaru, Shino, Konkuro, Gara, Tamari, Sasuke, and Rock Lee. Obviously, Lee lost, but out of all the people who did lose, he did put up the greatest fight. Remember, there are only 9 people who made it to the final round since the match between Uselessness and Ino was a tie, so they both lost. So, I was thinking about doing the Akatsuki as well, but there's no point in the series in which all 10 characters are alive. Or 10 Akatsuki members are alive at once. For example, if we go back to when Itachi first joined the Akatsuki, Obito wasn't an official member at the time and didn't become one until Sasori died in early Shippuden. So, in terms of members, it was Itachi, Kakuzu, Kakuzu's teammate who's nameless and who dies soon after Itachi joins, Zetsu, both black and white, but for most of the series, Black and White Zetsu act as one. Also, they share one individual Akatsuki cloak, so I generally count them both as one singular member. Sasori, Orochimaru, Juzo, uh, and Nagato. And also, Konan. I did not write this in the script, but I forgot to write down Konan. I don't, uh, as I said before, I don't count Black and White as the same. After Juzo dies, Orochimaru tries to steal Itachi's body and fails, and when he does that, he leaves the Akatsuki. Kakuzu kills his random teammate during that mission, so they're down to 8. Then Daedara joins, so they're back to 9. After Sasori dies, Obito joins his Tobi. Also, I forgot about Hidon. Hidon joined before uh, Kisame, I believe. And, the, and Kisame joined sometime after Juzo's death. So when Hidon joins Ikotsuki, the members are Tachi and Kisame, that's one duel, Deidara and Sasori, Kakusu and Hidon, Konan and Pain, and then Zetsu. Um, so that's a total of nine. Main point is that for the Ikotsuki specifically, I can't really draw this transition. And if you guys saw the thumbnail, you guys know what I'm talking about when I'm referring to the transition and in the tournament of power there's this one transition uh, in between in the middle of every episode or almost every episode in which there's like this chart of the universe 17 Goku's at the very right and he has the biggest portion of the screen then to the left of them there's Roshi, Android 18, Android 17, Gohan, Piccolo, Vegeta, Frieza, and the other two teammates, uh, Krillin and Tien. So I, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. If you've seen the thumb some thumbnail and you're watching, and once you watch the beginning, you'll know what I'm referencing. So because in this video, I'll show you guys the template that I created. For any other future video in which I do it where I redraw the transition in a specific style, uh, I'll cut out the part in the project in which I make the template 
because essentially I'm going to copy the project or the template and just use it for whatever, whenever I want to create the transition, whatever style I choose. So going back to um, the Naruto groups, for the Akatsuki, in that one, the 10 individuals are on a team, and I kind of wanted to do something like that for Naruto characters. But selecting from a specific group of people, in this case, training exam participants in the preliminaries from one specific time period. So unless I separated black and white Zetsu, I wouldn't have the 10 I needed for the Akatsuki. As far as the other Naruto groups go, the ones that I may do in the near future is Leaf tuning exam participants, in which I would do Team 7, which is just Naruto and Sasuke, because we all know we use this is absolutely irrelevant. Team 8, Kiba, Hinata, Shino. Team 10, aka Ino Shika Cho, Ino Shikamaru, and Cho. G, aka Ino Shika Cho. Neji and Lee. Since the transition involves just 10 people, I would have to leave someone out of the image, and I feel 10 10 out of them would probably be the best one to leave out because Neji and Lee both have significant fights within the tuning exams. 10 10 just takes a straight elder to Mari, and she's just essentially there to showcase that Tamari's very strong. That's the only group I have like completely jotted down, but I do have other um, group ideas. Uh, the Kage from all time periods of Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, uh, Jin the Jinchuriki, Miss Shinobi, Aspiring Kage, Cloud Shinobi, San Shinobi, Best Shinobi from all time periods covering Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, the Uchiha clan, key figures of the fourth great ninja war and looking at each company specifically, and leaf joining. Two other ideas that I just thought of are students of Jiraiya, which I don't think I can do 10 because Jiraiya did not have 10 students, uh, and my top 10 Naruto characters. As of now, the only people who are locked into that top 10 list are Naruto, Jiraiya, Obito, Nagato, and Sasuke. What I love about the Dragon Ball Super Broly art style is the simplicity of it. Seeing the visual style of the movie allowed me to understand that I don't need complex shading to make my characters look good. It also allowed me to change the way that I do my line art, in which my style back then was more strict, and the lines of my characters in the movie were more random and fluid. Speaking of, prior to making this artwork, I was experimenting on Agus Paint X, which is the software I use to create my digital art, to figure out the quickest way to achieve that kind of result. Because in the past, the line art would take so long, and I constantly have to switch between my ink pen and my eraser, which probably wasted more time than I really needed. So I set up with a brush that has the auto fade out on and it requires less erasing on my end and it should be faster. As I said in the last segment, the Dragon Ball Super Broly art style is my favorite Dragon Ball style. It's the only style that I've made multiple drawings of, each one better than the last. Last year alone, I did a Vegeta during the Tournament of Power, Khalifa during the Tournament of Power, Kale during the Tournament of Power, Android 17 during the Tournament of Power, and Kaba during his fight against Vegeta in the Universe 6 vs. Universe 7 tournament in the Dragon Ball Super Broly art style. The Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta drawing from 2020 was my first attempt at the style, and throughout the years I've learned some new techniques to make my final works just have more pizzazz, like using filters, um, using Gaussian blur, things like that. The simplicity of the shading, the selection of the colors, the difference in the color of line art, and more. There's mu much more I learned about the style from looking back at the references and thinking back to when I studied the anatomy of the style last year. It was also so amazing to see so many people recreate things in the Dragon Ball Super Broly art style, and I just wanted to jump in on that train. All in all, I am very glad I was able to witness such a simplistic yet elegant style that furthered my own art journey. As you guys know, I will create an anime slash manga that will surpass the greatest fictional work in existence, One Piece. Before we wrap things up, let me give my thoughts about the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie as a whole. Overall, I think with the exception to the art style, the movie was absolutely horrible. It had no story whatsoever. I will admit that this version of Broly is better than the Broly from all the DVZ movies, as that Broly's motivation was simply hearing Goku crying. Who the hell cares? Babies cry, bro. That's one of the only positives I can think of, um, again with the exception to the art style. 
The first portion of the movie retells the story of Frazier uh, destroying planet Vegeta and goes over Broly's childhood. I didn't see any kind of character development or dramatic change from any of the characters, and the portion of the movie that was in the present was just one big fight. The Frieza Force comes to Earth. Broly sees Goku and Vegeta, and the fight commences. That's literally it. There's no rising issue that forms, or anything that develops, or any kind of interesting or compelling plot. It's just one big fight, and I'm extremely disappointed by the lack of anything substantial. At least with Dragon Ball Z, which I think is massively inferior to Dragon Ball Super, there is development of characters such as Vegeta and Gohan, and things change throughout the different arcs of the series. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, check out my Twitter and Discord, both are in the description. If you want to know what I'm currently doing or thinking about, those two places are the best places to go. I will see you guys next time.